Hey, miss. Okay, so welcome back. We are about to jump into part two of the FPV WRA spec wing build from Video Aerial Systems. And we're going to get into the sparring, lamination, the electronics layout, install, the uh, setup, checking the CG, maiden, and flying. Hopefully you enjoy the content and uh, learn a thing or two while we do this. So and with that, let's jump into the build. All right, just doing a little laying out, checking out uh, the electronics positions, making sure that I've got uh, room for everything. Also decided to do a little bit of shaping on the motor mount here. Hopefully that'll reduce a little bit of weight here in the back and buried it uh, level with the foam block. Um, and I'm also considering probably taking some of these corners down so it's nice and uh, rounded off. Should make it a little bit more aerodynamic is the idea. Anyway, I'm going to let this uh, dry up in there with a little bit of foam tack. Might throw a couple drops of the, the, glue, the um, foam safe CA on there and then I'll hit it with a little bit of paint before it goes onto the bird. Alright, so we have this thing with the battery bay cut out and the spars are dropped in. There's one on this side, but it's actually dropped pretty deep so that I can get some wiring over it. And then there's the matching one a little bit shallower on this side. So it still gives me that I-beam strength. I also have the extra spar that IB Crazy recommends to prevent tearing. And since I had some left over, I went ahead and put a little short 4-inch one here too. So that way it's also got an I-beam right here at the joint where it might tear apart. So hopefully that doesn't really add a whole lot of weight, but keeps it nice and stiff. Um, the I actually used for the center ones, I went carbon fiber flat bars. So they're very strong if it tries to flex in the metal, and it actually has some give if it hits a nose on. The motor mount, I shaped up a good bit to let some airflow around there, and so I can drop the wires in easily. I don't think I'm going to paint it. Um, so now I just need to get to lamination. Okay, I've got the laminate set out here. You always want to make sure you have the uh, mat side facing down. That's the side with the adhesive. You have the shiny side facing up. I'm not going to cover it all in one side. I'm actually going to cover pretty much uh, to, to about here or so and split it, work the two sides independently, um, and then use a third to go over the middle section for extra reinforcement. All right, I have the laminate laid out. I've got the plane here, and I've got it pinned down so I can stretch it more easily by myself. And I'm going to wrap the top of it and fold that edge over. And I'm going to cut it along this section here so it's a lot more workable. The other thing that's really important is that before you get started, start with a really sharp knife. I put a fresh blade in and clean your work surface. Make sure you wipe it down with a damp rag and get all the dust off and stuff like that. Same thing with your plane. Get all the dust off your plane. You do not want to start laminating with dust or uh, foam particles and stuff all over everything. That's just going to prevent the lamb from sticking well. Got the wing lambed up here. Battery fits nicely. Gonna be able to drop that in there, I think. Whole thing looks pretty good. Got nice, good layering down here. Sometimes you get a little bubbling in here because of the way you're just sticking lamb on top of lamb with the flexi surface. So you can just poke a little hole and then apply heat around that hole and, and vacuum out that air and you get a nice tough plastic spot here. All right, time to uh, attach the control surfaces. All right, we got the uh, control surfaces attached here. Just do a, a hinge. Basically, these are an inch and a half wide. So I measure out seven inch strip, and then I start about an inch and a half up here, wrap over, around, fold it all the way back, do the underside, and then I just heat the top of the hinge one last time and it flexes it back and makes it nice and uh, low resistance for the servo so they don't have any hard time moving those. 
They just work nicely. And I've never had one of these hinges fail on me. I've beat the wyvern up so many times. And these, these hinges, I've broken the wing multiple times and the hinges still have not failed. So definitely a good way to go if you have uh, issues with your hinges. This works very well. So now I have to mount the servos after I center those and make sure that I get the uh, control arms and horns all set up. later. All right, it's been actually a couple of weeks since uh, I got everything laminated and in place, but I finally got around to cutting some holes and drop it in the electronics so I can start getting the balance done. So here I've got the servos in place. There's uh, some welders around the sides. I'm probably going to cut this top layer of tape off, but the tape being around it will make it easier to pull it out if they get damaged. I've got my Unify VTX in here and a Minion left hand buried in there. I've got my X4R receiver. I wanted to get the newer ones from FreeSky, but they are not released yet, and I wanted to get this plane done. So I've got one antenna buried here and one kind of coming up. Give me a little bit of diversity L pattern there. And I've got my camera mount just kind of cut out here. I'll cut away whatever's blocking the lens. I've got the wires running coming out here. So, and with the ESC, I went ahead and soldered it up, tinned it so I can get everything done. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it on this like a lot of other people do. That should help keep it nice and cool in operation. Keep me from losing any efficiency or top speed when I am just keep it pinned on the throttle. So the next step, now that I've got everything in here, I'm going to let the glue sit for a little bit and then I'm going to go get a battery and start to balance it so I know exactly where the CG is and I can cut the motor mount so that way I'll know how far in I have to come. Two weeks later. So picking up where we left off, we went ahead and uh, got the BEC here. This is an adjustable voltage BEC. I've got it set at about 5.5 volts and it's supposed to run up to 3 amps. I think it'll do 2 amps just fine. Um, I've got myself a BL Heli 32 ESC here and that's going to be nice, you know, caught here in the airflow. Everything's nice and smooth. Got it all lined up here. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and install my control horns and arms and get every, that all squared away. And once I do that, this wire is the right length, but I'll have to put an extension on this one because it's just a little short. We've got the prop slot cut out here so we can get plenty of clearance. Got some lamb over some of the electronics just so they can stay in in case of a crash. A little bit of, da a couple dabs of glue in the track here where I made the slit so that way the foam closes back together, gives it a little bit more strength. We got our control horns on there. Everything is looking good. So you can see I've got the uh, battery fitting in there. The wires are all tucked in really nice. So you can see very low drag. That's what I'm going for right there. The lamb all the way in the back and underneath. And so here on the winglets, this is what I usually do. I cut a couple of holes in there with a drill. And I do them matched together so they're the same distance. They line up. So then, on the sides here, I've got some nylon standoffs that are glued in. They're still holding up and some nylon M3 screws and those will go right into here and grip that onto the side. And the benefit is, if I get into a really hard crash, the heads of these screws tend to break off. I can unscrew the rest of the shaft 
and pop this back on without doing too much damage. I have broken these, uh, hitting some concrete and stuff, but they're easy to cut replacements out of Coroplast. That's what I do with my other ones, like you can see here. So now it's time to throw the whole thing on the scale and see what we're at. So without any battery, dry weight of the frame, we're at 355 grams. If we compare that with the old wing, let's see if I can get this to balance. The old wing is 523 grams, just the airframe. So that's a huge difference between the two. So it's 6 a.m. and I'm getting ready for Flying Circus. Going to made in the new spec wing today once I get there. Here we are. We're all fully set up. Everything's ready to go. Probably going to take off the winglets just for travel, make it easier to fit in the car. But other than that, we're going to get everything packed up here. I got a little tooling scattered, bags going on, so I'm going to spend the next, I don't know, half hour or so, get everything loaded up, and try and hit the road by eight. All right, so if you want to know why we spend so much time building and measuring and making sure that we get it all right, it's this guy right here. Tech inspection passed. So this frame is now tech spec legal, so we can uh, fly it in the race today. But that's why you measure twice and cut once.